So I, uh, okay, start one over there. So that's another case of we have a pointer that's not uh, resting on the uh, on the actual surface. The pointer is like you know a foot above it. Okay. So uh, that's good uh, good surface positioning for the uh, the feedback target point when you're on there. And this is using the the idea that if you don't have anything active, so it doesn't show anything at all, you might want to have um, just a smaller, you've got the nice big glowy thing on an activated thing, you might want to have a smaller, maybe different color uh, one when it hits other surfaces. That's also generally uh, pretty good of changing the color of the, the laser pointer and the... And I'm not, uh, I thought when I did this before I would see a clearer animation. Maybe it's, uh, it's going faster now. But I'm not getting a great sense of uh, of of it actually like coming out of my hand and moving through the world. And when it, whenever you're dealing with things that are at the very near field, uh, that can be a problem. Where in the games you might just be starting some fraction of meters out in front uh, and then moving ahead, but. Uh, when you've got things that are happening within a couple feet, you need to really precisely say, not just kind of analytically some distance ahead, you want to start like, at this bone position, and the first frame should be one small delta from where it is right there, and then moving on into a trajectory in the world. In general, I, 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 I'm not a huge fan of gestures, you know, like doing something and having it recognized and, because it's kind of a binary action. I, um, because it is problematic where sometimes you do it and you're not sure, like, how is the recognizer misinterpreting my, uh, you know, my gesture in some way. Um, the audio for, um, you know, the, the flying and the whenever the, you're in sort of a kind of a ball, right? And whenever it, it touches uh, or collides against anything, you hear some sound, uh, you have some background music. And um, yeah, every time you jump on like a important platform, you also get sound cues for that. All right. So uh, it wasn't clear to me as the uh, what's the difference between the red platforms and the regular platforms. Uh, so the they're basically you have to find these triangle platforms, and uh, when you press three of them, they will open the gate to the next level. Okay. So right now it's all very linear because the whole point is to get used to the um, locomotion system. But later on, you know, they'll be hidden and kind of harder to get. Similarly with the photos, I, there's there's an optimal resolution for anything that winds up getting drawn in VR. I, if you're not using a, like one of the overlay layers, you can kind of look at, um, and that's probably maybe half the screen. Those, those images should probably only be 512 by 384 or something, and it looks like they're uh, significantly higher resolution. If you start with higher resolution, you should make sure that the images get mipmaps generated for them.